Hey guys, Duke here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kokatet APPPE, or that stands for All Purpose Personal Protective Ensemble Chemical Biological Overgarment. Now, to get into the history, uh, the APPPE was developed for U.S. SOCOM warfighters and adopted around 1999 to replace the abundant JS List Type 7. And um, there might have been a few other overgarments. They were probably use it, also using the standard JS List Type 2. And U.S. SOCOM wanted a chemical biological protective overgarment, which was less burdensome to the user and provided a much greater degree of protection in a combat environment. And the solution was provided by W.L. Gore and Associates, who developed the Gore Compact Selectively Permeable Barrier Fabric, which let a, mi a minute amount of perspiration and body heat to evaporate from the inside out, but it did not allow for aerosols and liquid agents to penetrate the material. And the Overall cut and design of the suit was developed by Kokatat, based off of their popular maritime assault suit system. And in fact, there's one would be hard pressed to find very many differences between the AP PPE and the maritime assault suit, uh, which I will get into in a moment. And I will probably do a full on um, comparison eventually of the maritime assault suit and the AP PPE. Um, but nevertheless, the suit was officially adopted in 1999, and it was the gold standard. For U.S. SOCOM warfighters, it's used by um, Delta Force, it's used by uh, the U.S. Coast Guard, it's used by a lot of different special forces um, as well, although only within the U.S. I have not found any evidence of any foreign agents use, utilizing this suit, um, and I have not found evidence of law enforcement using these either. However, I will say that these suits are very, very hard to find. I might have the pleasure of being the first to do a review on the suit on, on the history of YouTube, uh, and there is a lot, a couple different variants of the APPP. Um, the one I have here is the most common variant, um, which is obviously the training variant. Um, you can, there, there has been originals found every so often. These suits are extremely hard to come by. Even the training ones are quite uncommon, and more often than not, they're again they're confused for maritime assault suits. So kind of that's where you want to keep your eyes peeled for these. Um, but anywho, yeah. So these are very uncommon, but they're most commonly found in this livery here where the base color is tan 499 and then all of the reinforcements, pockets, and accents are made out of a what's known as maritime assault suit or MAS gray. It's also called sepia gray or alpha green um, even though it's more of a brown color. Um, but that's the most common rendition to find this suit. Um, there have also been examples of these suits found in Coast, uh, U.S. Coast Guard Blue, obviously primarily issued to the U.S. Coast Guard, and some very, very early examples, possibly prototypes, were produced of an M81 Woodland with um, black Cordura reinforcements. However, these may have been just prototypes. I have not seen much evidence of these being produced today, and as far as I've looked into it, there are no currently active contract numbers for Woodland pattern APPPEs. Um, the APPPE itself has two main different variants. There is the variant you're looking at here, which has a collar, which integrates with the M45CB mask, which uh, I will get into in a moment how it integrates. And then there is a hooded variant, which seems to be the most popular, popularly used, and I've actually never seen one of the hooded variants on the market. Um, the hoods are quite interesting in the way they install, the way um, they're very loose and baggy when they're open, and then you basically have a roll flap in the back that cinches up the excess and... Um, sort of attaches around the neck like a collar with a couple of Velcro tabs. But anywho, um, getting back to the suit that I have, obviously, as I've stated many times before, mine is a training example. The training suits were developed or uh, introduced, rather, to supplement the need to train in these suits and get used to their features um, and simulate the high heat and stress of a CBRN environment um, to be as most extreme as possible while not having to ruin a legitimately functioning APPPE. The whole advantage of these is that you could use them uh, and train with them and you wouldn't be damaging an actual suit. What are the differences between the training and the actual APPPEs? Let me get into that. Um, so obviously the training suits are not chemical biological protective. The actual um, suits themselves the ones that are actually functional, they are made out of a Gore Kempak material, as stated before. Whereas these training suits, they're just made out of a Cordura material, which is lined with a uh, thin layer of white plastic on the inside. Uh, in addition to that, the zippers, uh, such as the slant zip across the front and the relief zipper, which I will show off in a moment, are just a standard YKK number no. 5 coil nylon zipper, whereas the original suits use the... Um, 
waterproof brass zippers, similarly to the maritime assault suit again. So that is the main way to define the difference between a training and a, uh, a actual AP PPE overgarment. And obviously the most definite and obvious example is these are usually marked with a letter T somewhere on the chest or in an example that I used to own that you can see on screen here, um, they're, most of the common ones are found with a giant T marked on the chest to indicate training and there's also a marking on the back as well. Sorry for the sudden jump cut, I just wanted to mention that there is currently an upgraded variant of the AP PPE Ensemble that is being evaluated and tested at the current moment. As of 2019, it was announced that there would be a upgraded variant with strategically placed stretch panels in the cut of the suit itself to allow greater mobility and flexibility and user comfort while in a CB environment. This upgrade to the APPPE has been known as the TATPE or Tactical Advanced Threat Protective Ensemble, which is definitely kind of a step in the right direction for name considering how many times I've said PP already in this uh, video so far. But jokes aside, I'm very interested to see whether these suits will become common or more scarce in the future. They're really kind of a mystery and probably my favorite and if not and one of the best chemical biological protective overgarments on the market. Although I, that being said, I do not own an original as mentioned before. So let's get into the details of the kit itself. So this one being a training example lacks one particular feature that the actual legitimate collar APPPE would lack. And that is a carbon uh, insert for the collar itself, which would be worn under it and the collar would uh, go around that and would add a extra barrier of protection in case there was any leakages around there. But as you can see on the collar of the suit itself, um, it has a flexible gray portion made out of gore chem pack material, which has several um, Velcro fastener patches made of the hook variety of Velcro that would interface with the neck ring on the APPPE separate hood. And then the actual seal is maintained with this thin piece of neoprene, which is backed on both sides with um, a spandex material, I believe. And that would create the seal around the user. It's a little bit awkward, um, but definitely it, uh, you can get used to it after a while. Um, so that being said, let me get a closer look on the M45 um, APPPE hood. Uh, and I've already shown this off plenty of times before, but just as a recap, um, what I assumed were uh, little loops for a drawstring on the inside were actually pull tabs so that you could release this um, this ring, this Velcro ring on the inside of the hood, uh, which is also made out of um, spandex, ba spandex back nylon, uh, which the other side is completely lined with um, loop fastener. So it is it completely interfaces with the collar itself. But as you can see, those little tabs are just to release it and serve no other purpose. Moving on to other features. Um, the sleeves uh, or the cuffs of the suit have this two strap Velcro closure gusset system and there's also a size tag under there, just on the end of the, end of the uh, Velcro there, the camera will zoom. Uh, and then peeling this back, there is another uh, foam neoprene and spandex cuff which has another Velcro flap and gusset. And this would go over the um, the JS List Block 2 glove upgrade, otherwise known as the uh, Cloutier T3 Combat Glove System, which I actually have a set of along with the integrated footwear system or the Gore Chempak uh, Chemical Biological Protective Sock. You can see it on screen here. I'm not going to be donning these in the review just for simplicity, but th these would be utilized with the suit itself. Uh, I do not have the glove outers. I just have the inner gloves and I will be substituting a pair of Nomex uh, Sage Green fl uh, Summer Flight Gloves uh, in, in lieu of the original uh, T3 outer gloves. But they're essentially the same thing. It's just the JS List Block 2 uh, glove upgrade is made out of black Nomex, whereas the gloves I'm using are Sage Green. Looking over on the upper of the sleeve, you, got, you can't have a piece of US SOCOM clothing without your slanted sleeve pocket. I absolutely love slanted sleeve pockets. Um, interesting thing is because this is an earlier suit, it actually has this rich chocolate brown Velcro. I absolutely love this stuff. In fact, the uh, older, um, the, the more recent training suit that I recently sold, um, it actually had Ranger green colored Velcro, which was nice. Um, but for some reason, I just love this chocolate colored Velcro on here. And as you can see, the pocket is gusseted and it has a bit of one inch elastic for closure and retention and it is completely a billowed pocket. It can store a lot more than it actually can. And obviously, 
closes with a bit of Velcro on the top there, and then you have space to put any patches of any sort that you want on here. Just sticks right on. And then moving on from the sleeves, you have a slanted chest zipper, which I actually like this design. It makes the suit very easy to enter, and it opens with a storm flap, which has several Velcro patches, and a long zipper, which is about 31, 32 inches in length. I will make a note that I had to make a small repair right here. The, the suit that I re had received was actually miss, missing a brass clinch tip at the end of the zipper, and the zipper had traveled past its furthest point of travel, and it was completely jammed shut, and I had to redo this entire review and try and fix the zipper. I just sewed a piece of nylon webbing on there, and I uh, bar tacked the end of the zipper to make sure it would not separate again, so I'm taking no chances. And I'm not too worried about having to modify it, because, again, this is a training suit, and it's not chemical biological protective. Opening up the zipper to look at the inside, you can see that the entire, uh, the entirety of the suit's interior is lined with that sweaty um, white plastic coating. Um, this isn't a lining that you can just tear out if that's what you're thinking. This is literally just the other side of the fabric. So that is a bit unfortunate. That's my biggest complaint about the training suits, but it has its purpose. And then obviously you can see the markings here. Training, AP, PPE, overgarment with collar, the NSN, and the contract numbers. Manufactured by Cocotet Incorporated, and mine is a size large regular. Um, after I the... the other AP PPE training suit that I owned was actually a size large tall. I bought this one hoping it would fit me better, but I guess I am more of a size medium tall or medium regular, actually, uh, when it comes to the uh, all-purpose personal protective ensemble, which is weird considering I fit a size large regular maritime assault suit, but what have you. Live, live and let live. Moving on from that, obviously I have yet to mention or yet to really touch upon the uh, relief zipper here, and I don't really know why they felt the need to include this. There's not really a likely scenario where you're going to be pissing in a CBRN environment, but in case you did, relief zippers there. You can piss in a CBRN environment if you so felt the need to. Other than that, we have two very beefy thigh pockets, which have Velcro closures as always, and they are billowed with a very thin half-inch piece of elastic. I wonder why they chose that on these, when these are probably going to get more use in the sleeve pockets. But what have you, they are there. And I should also make note that all the pockets have drain holes made out of mesh material on each corner. And then moving on to the legs, the, the shin portion, you have a, um, a Velcro flap right here, which covers up another spandex and foam neoprene collar um, with another gusseted Velcro flap. And then you have this long zipper running down the entirety of the leg, and that is so you can don this suit while you are wearing your standard um, combat boots. And you can just zip this up, fold the flap closed, and then fold this outer flap closed. It's a little bit um, double security, but you can never be too careful with CBRN environments. And that's pretty much all there is to see in regards to the training AP PPE. I will stop the video here, and then I will go ahead and put on the suit and show you how, to, how it is donned. So... I will go ahead and see you then. Alright guys, I will begin to put on the AP PPE overgarment and show you how it is properly donned. So first off, we're obviously going to start, as normal, one leg at a time. And since this is a uh, this is designed for it, you can don it with boots on. It is a little bit tricky though, so you'll want something to sit down on or lean against. In this case, I'm going to use a wall. You can use whatever. First, I'm going to find the actual sleeve first. I'm just sticking my foot right into the buttocks area of the suit. So there we go. And then you want to manipulate the, the actual gusset open, and then slip that over your boot. It's important to have those open. So. Once again, better to do it while sitting down, but if you can't, that's fine as well. And then do the other leg. And I apologize if I'm not getting my feet properly on camera. I will do my best to show off the process. Um, but it is a bit difficult, obviously. With the range of view my camera has, it is quite difficult to get down anywhere and see anything. Especially without a cameraman. But, 
Nevertheless, the show must go on. Then you just pull the suit the rest of the way up, like so. And I am going to roll these back a bit, just so they are easy to fasten later. Although you could go ahead right now and zip these down if you wanted. It's not too essential right now, but it's something you can do at least. So these start at the knee and zip all the way down. Close these up just so it's easier to don the sleeves. And there we have it. Let's get onto these sleeves themselves. It's pretty simple, honestly. There's not a whole lot to this suit. There's a couple nuanced little features that you may want to take note of, but otherwise, it's very, very simple to put on. And with the collar, you are definitely going to want to have the flap up here open in order to slip your head through, because it is a very tight fit. And as you can see, mine is a little bit baggy on me. Um, that's a bit unfortunate, but, you know, i got to make do with what I have. And there are belts for this suit. Like, I, there is a photograph of this suit on display um, at some sort of uh, convention, and it does have a belt across the midsection to retain some of the excess. And that is what I'm going to be doing here in a moment. So, first, let us zip up the suit. Now, this is probably going to be a lot more difficult if it's the, um, what, the actual legitimate APPPE because those use a waterproof zipper. So, you, what you would do is you would grasp it with one hand behind the zipper, going across your chest, and then use your arm that's adjacent to the actual pull tab itself to zip it down the rest of the way, pulling taut whenever you need to and make sure not to get caught on these Velcro uh, storm flaps. And once that is down, you can go ahead and fold and fasten the storm flap down securely. And next, you are going to want to do the legs. So, obviously, there is a Velcro gusset uh, and a neoprene seal on the ankles, cuffs of the pants themselves. And you just fold that over, fasten it. Then you would take the outer gusset, fold that over, and fasten that. Although it's better to do it when you're when it's down on the ground. And when you're done, it should look something like this. You can see that properly. Hopefully you can. If it was blurry, I apologize. My camera is not great. And so, obviously, you would do the other one. We're, oh, careful not to undo the zipper, though. Just tuck and fold. Pull down. Tuck. And fold. And that's the legs done. Now let's get the belt on, because this is a little bit saggy. Obviously not as saggy as my... Uh, last APPPE, but this one is still definitely uh, ample in the waist department. It's got at least a couple inches on this thing. I do not have a legitimate APPPE belt, but I will be using this Blackhawk Riggers belt to do the job just fine. I'll not be fastening it properly, just for simplicity. And one area I might want to make note of is the reinforcements across the butt area, where there is a bit of elastic up here for cinching. Obviously, it works a lot better if the suit actually is sized to you, but you have a lot of skid area along the back for extra durability. Next, um, you would do the gloves last, but um, yeah, I'll do that last. I'll try to explain it the best I can once I have the mask on. Um, but. It'll be a little bit muffled, so I do apologize. So sticking those in there. Obviously, you would don the mask as normal. I have really long hair. I need to cut my hair. I can't get anywhere due to the virus. Uh, it's like impossible to quick don in 45s. And 
you would pull the neck seal inside out so that the pile side is facing outwards. Then simply invert the hood, locate these tabs and the uh, elastic or the velcro patches on the collar and fasten them together. Going all the way around the neck. And finally, the chemical gloves, which I will be able to show you up close. It's very similar to the pants. So, in this case, don the glove, pull the, make sure you have it over your inner clothing, and you would take that neoprene seal and tuck it around the outside of the glove. It helps if I pull this back to show you. So then you take the gusset, fold it over, and fasten it tight. Do the same for the exterior. And then obviously you would do the same for the opposite side of the glove, or the opposite hand rather. And there you have it. You have successfully donned your all-purpose personal protective ensemble. And of course it helps to have a buddy to check if you got everything installed correctly if I don't already have it. And that's pretty much it. If you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them down in the comments below as always. I'm Duke, and I will see you all later.